John here guys and today we're talking about the HG LRC Recon 3. This is the latest incarnation of Dave C's innovative long range micro things and this is a 1S craft that can run off of 18650s. Now you may have seen this thing go all over the internet as a 3D printed one celled battery powered quad that you just plug in like you would a toy. There's no lipos in here. This runs off of 18650 cells. Uh, so you don't have any connectors. This is the battery holder. And there's a thing that is very similar to the type of battery holder you would find in a toy, uh, like your old school Game Boy. And you'll get plenty of play time out of this because these little puppies pump out a lot of long range flight for you. Now it isn't perfect though. Um, when this came out, Dave C actually made the entire frame 3D printable and released the files on Thingiverse. This became the number one file on the Thingiverse page for a few weeks in a row. That's right, a tiny 3D printable drone. Well, this is a bind and fly completed version that you can buy from HGLRC. Now they actually make the arms out of carbon fiber, but this front camera holder and the bottom part that holds your like electronics is still 3D printed. The nice thing about this is if you break an arm like Bardwell did with his, you can actually reprint your own frames and basically have unlimited supply of frames and arms for this. Now when it came out, I was super excited. I actually bought some of these 18650 battery trays and planned on making my own. But then I realized because this only runs off of one cell or 3.7 volts, uh, you need a specialized set of electronics or you need some step down converter things. And I just didn't want to have to be able to assemble all that. They weren't readily available. If I ordered them from Banggood, it would take forever. And when it came, to them making an actual completed bind and fly version, I went ahead and purchased that instead. Now, a couple of notes. Uh, if you have really premium 18650 cells, you can get quite a long flight time. I'm using these Samsung cells I got from Heli Nation. They're pretty good cells. I did not get super long flight times or very punchy flights with any of these cells. Uh, this was the best one that I had. I was able to struggle to get nine minutes of flight time. Scotty, I can't change the laws of physics. I got to have 30 minutes. Now, nine minutes is still a pretty good amount of flight time, but there's no way if you're not going to go out and spend more money. And part of the attraction was for me was I already have a bunch of these cells laying around. I use them for my goggles. I use them for my radio. I even use them for the fan that sits next to me blowing cool air in the summer. Uh, so uh, I also recommend you don't use one of these chargers like this. This is one that just has lights. There's really no readouts. If you're going to fly a craft like this, really, if you're going to be an FPV using 18650 cells at all, get a premium charger like this ISDT. This can actually be powered by USB-C, which I love, and it actually charges them all the way. I noticed when I did a test, when this said it was fully charged, I put it in here and it was only at 4.15. Um, volts per cell. So there was a little bit of juice you were leaving on the table. So if you want your goggles to run longer and this drone to fly longer, you need a better charger like this. Uh, you can go out and buy some really high discharge rate and get a little bit of better flight. But the whole thing for me was to reuse the same cells I already have. So nine minutes of flight time. Speaking of though, that is very underpowered flight. Just can't do it, Captain. Now, if you want something a bit more freestyleable, you're going to want to go with something like this FPV Cycle Baby Tooth. Yes, they're both one-celled crafts, but the 18650 cell that the Recon carries is much, much heavier. They both have a 3-inch prop size, and they both can fly with a 1202.5 size motor. But the KV and weight of this HGLRC Recon is going to be more for cruising, while the Baby Tooth is going to give you that freestyle punch and trick power maneuverability. 
you've ever flown a freedom spec race quad compared to that same quad on 6s you have much much less power you have to like turn way before you're actually approaching the obstacle you have to adjust the way you fly there's almost no amount of punch to get you over obstacles trees buildings anything like that this is a cruising quad make no mistake there's no freestyle to be had here whatsoever so if the cruising for a long flight time and being able to slap batteries in there without having a lipo charger i could easily bring this along with me charge these batteries off of an uh power bank uh, through the USB-C and I could fly almost forever. This thing does not charge particularly fast though, but if you had a bunch of them, it would work. Uh, so this is not for freestyle. This is just for cruising. For me, seven, eight minutes is plenty fine. At first, I wasn't used to how much these cells sag. So as soon as you try to do a punch, you're gonna see three volts immediately. And that freaked me out. At first I thought, okay, this can only fly for one minute. And then I realized, okay, 18650 cells, you can really pull them down to more like two and a half volts and you just have to eliminate all punches. If you do too many punches, you're gonna reduce that flight time and you're not gonna go anywhere anyway because it doesn't have any power. So if you're thinking you're gonna do freestyle, if you think this is a beginner quad to learn on, throw all those out of your mind. This is uh, somebody for who already knows how to fly, who wants to be able to go long range because it does have this crossfire receiver, it does have an uh, independent video transmitter. It only has a dipole antenna, so this is not going to get the best video reception. The other thing I was a little afraid of, of sending this thing too far, because although it does have high flight times, if all of a sudden you did need to remove an obstacle, if you did get some wind and you had to push it more, your flight time is going to reduce. And the other thing is, this whole thing is running off of 3.7 volts. So even though this battery can go down to 2.5, not all of the electronics can still power up at those low voltages at certain point your video transmitter is going to start to brown out and not have enough power to run and that or your receiver and when those cut out you're going to be gone out of the air anyway so i essentially flew until this thing browned out which is nine minutes so very very fun quad it's actually fairly inexpensive if you did want one of these i think buy it and then just 3d print your own spares because there's not a lot of boards that can run off of one cell battery so you'd have to do some specialization to build one i was really excited about the three printable nature of this thing but in practice it's a bit more work than it's worth to try to build one now if this ran on anything but a single cell, then yeah, this would be awesome. But then the thing is, by the time you add a little bit of weight, it's very underpowered. It's less power than like a Mobula 7 tiny whoop thing outside. So still very, very cool. And it looks awesome. Great job, Dave C. Thanks, guys.